The Noise, Noise HLS, and Noise HLS Auto Effects can all be found under the Noise and Grain category. I just grab the noise effect and apply it, this time to an adjustment layer over my entire comp. I'll zoom in nice and close so we can see that as I increase the amount of noise, it just adds noise to my image. We also have the ability to turn the noise type from using color noise to not using color noise and instead just using luminance values, basically increasing and decreasing the brightness of every pixel in my image randomly. And by default, this effect is animated, so every frame has a random noise pattern. We can also clip the result values or not clip them, but this is more for a 32 bits per channel workflow where you have pixels that are brighter than 100% white and darker than 100% black. But that's all there is to the noise effect. If we go back and add the noise HLS effect, we have a lot more controls over here. First of all, we have the noise type and this allows us to change it from uniform, squared and grain and we'll look at those in a second. But this effect gives us the ability to adjust the noise pattern on not just the overall image, but on the hue, the lightness, and saturation individually. If I add noise to the hue, then it's just going to randomly shift the hue values of all of my pixels according to this random noise pattern. Same thing goes for lightness. If I turn that hue back off and turn up the lightness, then we're just increasing or decreasing the lightness value of every picture according to that noise pattern. And finally, the saturation. We're increasing or decreasing the saturation randomly. And I can mix and match these to custom dial in any type of noise pattern. Let me reset all of that because this was all according to the uniform noise pattern, but we have a few other options. So if I just add some lightness noise again, and then change this from uniform to squared, then we're just gonna get a different calculation for the noise pattern. It looks a little bit different. And then finally, we have the grain noise type. If we switch to that, we get another option that's no longer grayed out, which is the grain size. And I really like this part of this effect. If I increase the lightness noise, you can see that our noise is now much bigger. It's a lot chunkier. And the grain size value allows me to scale that back or make it even bigger. So we could make it really nice and big and that will give us a much softer but larger grain pattern. And we could add in some saturation and maybe even some hue in there if we wanted to as well. And we also have this noise phase control. And this is important because this effect by default is not animated. As I scrub through my timeline, you can see that noise pattern doesn't update. That's what the noise phase is for, but it does it in a very kind of uniform way. If you want animated noise like before, we'll get rid of that noise HLS and then just bring out noise HLS auto, which sounds like it's going to automatically add noise, but really what that auto means is it's automatically going to animate the grain. Otherwise, it's exactly the same as the noise HLS effect. So if I switch this to grain and I increase the lightness and then press the space bar, the noise is going to be animated. But you can see that the noise animation speed to 24 frames per second, I'm gonna change that to 30 and then it'll match my comps frame rate or I could turn it way down to something like three, and then it will animate a whole lot slower. But that's all there is to the noise, noise HLS, and noise HLS auto effects. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.